It is Wednesday, my peoples. It's actually Wednesday. I finally know what day of the week it is. That's the first time in at least three days that I know what day it is properly uh, and correctly. Um, welcome to Group Therapy Night. So, uh, a couple of things before we get started. As always, there's the bar. Tell your friends to follow the channel because I got another three month Xbox Live or uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription burning a hole in my pocket and I need to offload it. So tell your friends, come follow the channel and they might be able to win it. Um, as, as is tradition now, Friday will be Fortnite Friday. Um, Sunday will be back in dungeons with the crew. And of course, Monday is Minecraft Monday with the crew. Um, but tonight it's therapy night. And we're going to talk about self-care tonight because it's a very important thing. And uh, that's about it. Uh, tonight, I have with me, as always, two of my wonderful crew members. And, of course, the lovely Ali Beth. Um, so, hi. Hello. Hello. Um, hi. Hi. Um, did I miss anything in the, the announcements? I think that I think I covered most of it, yeah. Don't forget to Ooh. like, comment, subscribe, smash oh. the notification bell. Just, just, just like take your mouse and just like throw it at the screen a bunch of times until it does it. That's what I don't do. Don't do that. You'll hurt your monitor. Oh. Monitors have feelings too. Um, oh, I, I'm, I'm wearing the milk stein because I don't have the milk stein tonight. Because tonight I'm drinking sweet tea. Because uh, I need the caffeine and the sugar. Because I, I had a, who boy, I had a, a, a slow start this morning. Um, you sure did, bud. <laughs> oh my god, like, Lollipop can tell you, I was... Ice Bear needs it for everyday hustling. <gasps> Allie, thank you. I love you. Absolutely. I love your face so much. I miss your face. I love your, I love your face and I miss it too. Oh, so much missing of faces. Oh. It's okay. We'll, we'll listen. I'm, we'll catch up. Yeah, I, listen. I'm almost vaccinated, and I'm telling you, I'm coming up there to see y'all. Um, but that's yeah. Okay. You know what? Let's. <sighs> there we go. Okay, we got the we got the music on. Everything's good. Okay. <sighs> hmm. So before we dive into anything, um, how's everybody's week been so far? <laughs> Elena, we'll get to yours. I, th I think, I think <laughs> you should. I think you should go third. <laughs> huh? <laughs> uh, so <No> let's. comment. <laughs> let's 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 start with let's start with you, Allie. How has your week been so far? My week has been okay. It's busy, but not too busy, but then also tiring. I don't know. I'm just tired. So, but it's not been a terrible week. Just, we were like off on Monday, kind of. And then today I had to go in and do some testing with kids. And then I had meetings in the end. It's just my schedule has been all over the place. And I don't do well when I'm not on my routine. So, I can understand that quite a bit, quite a bit. Yep. yep. So that's me. Not terrible, but off my routine, and it's it's messing with me a little. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Lollipop, how about you, bud? Yeah, I'm most part doing all right. I have like no motivation to do shit right now, though. So that's a hmm. that's a problem. But you and me both, bud. I mean. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's it's been a week of <laughs> it's it's been a week full of I don't fucking want to do anything and it's oof it's getting to the point where we have to do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We got bugs to fix. Oh, I had interviews to do conduct. Oh yeah. It's uh, yeah. I got <sighs> a little organization taken care of though. I got a whiteboard. Nice. In room. Nice. So writing stuff down you know i've been thinking about getting a whiteboard to put so the 
so I'm facing, uh, you know, this is this is a it's a fairly small bedroom that I use as my office, um, and so I've got the door and the closet over here. Okay, so not much wall space over there. In fact, the only thing that's on that wall is I've got this um, IKEA chest of drawer set that's like the the short dresser. Um, and it's got the printer mm -hmm. on top of it. And then hanging on the wall, I actually have this piece of artwork that's just, it's fantastic. It's Samus, but it's done Iron Man style. So she's standing on this like center pedestal. And like around her in the background are all of her different suits. Like Iron, like Tony Stark has in his garage with all of his Iron Man suits. Um, so that's really cool. Um, and then I got this wall over here, which is where the window is. And the window is literally like 75% of the wall. So I can't hang anything there. And of course, back behind me, you can see the robes and the 100 acre wood map, which reminds me, I still have to hang up. I, I want to put the I want to put the floating McRib over here, I think. So it's like we've got flanking artwork. So I just be able to see both of those. Um, I just haven't gotten to it yet because I have to clean the fucking office. Um, but what I want to do is on this wall over here, really what I have is I've got the TV, which is like, and, and Lollipop, you've seen this, it's like 40% of the width of the wall because it's a 55 inch TV in a basically 10 foot wide room. So this TV is huge compared to the size of the room. It's just happened to be the old living room TV and I couldn't bring myself to get rid of it. Um, <laughs> stop it, Viv. <laughs> And so I, 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 like I have all of this space over here that I haven't done anything with yet, and I'm thinking about doing something with it. I don't know yet though. So, whiteboard was one of those things I thought about, or maybe putting like some kind of a monitor up there with something that stays on it because I got four outputs on this damn video card. Might as well use one of them. But that's, yeah. Ah. Uh. I like whiteboards. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a very good use. So uh, I my last year of college or undergrad, I like got a whiteboard. It was like, why did I not do this the whole time? Because I could just put everything that was due up there and it felt so good to like erase things. So Yeah. It's it's a good it's a good tool. For sure. Yeah. So, um, Elena, how's your week been? A week. <laughs> <laughs> today, just a week today. Just t today alone, boy. It's been it, it's been a it's been a week today for you, hasn't it? It's mm -hmm. been a week today. Yeah. So. Yeah. Are so. you are you feeling starting to decompress a little bit at least? No, I'm more anxious than I was. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Not even a little. Fair I enough. was hoping for that, and now I've just... I won't decompress until I'm on this, the other side of this, one way or the other, because now I'm just like, so am I going to make the short list? I have no mm. idea if I'll make the short list. And so my brain's just doing that. Yep. Plus the whole everything that got dumped on me this morning and then we were supposed to have a meeting at noon about one of my projects that we were structuring so that everyone could be communicated with and that got cancelled because the developer was out which is fine except for the fact that included in the email because I've reached out about a issue that I was planning on talking to them about today um, we communicated with one supervisor that we wouldn't be able to perform bot analysis we don't have the bandwidth for it i'm like the whole point of this was for everyone to get the same communications but that's fine i'm just a senior representative it's fine what do i know you know it's funny because <laughs> we have um over in in kin's community um our friend vifa uh vifa lives in the uk and is um is she's in the same line of work that lollipop and i are in and uh, she has this problem, and I imagine you and you've told me not not exactly the same, but like similar kind of stories from your work situation where um, things end up falling on her, even though it's outside of the scope of what she does. 
Um, now hers is a little more extreme in so much as her example was her IT director will just like she'll be she'll have to be acting IT director for the day. Um, and it's her director that morning's be like, oh, by the way, I'm out today. Here's my calendar. Take care of it. So, you know, there's that. Wow. Yeah. It, yeah. The, it, the project is at least starting to be manageable because it's, I'm no longer required to review every case. We're just taking what anyone emails us as issues and reviewing them. So I now have space on my plate again, but I'm just like the entire point of setting up these regular weekly meetings was for everyone to be communicated with. And it turns out that we're not going to have the document that Anshu wanted in the first place because they don't have bandwidth, which means that I could probably create the damn thing if they just asked me to, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, so I'm just like, I don't, I don't understand. And the whole, um, whole stuff this morning is just more waiting for possible layoffs is not fun mm. yeah yep I, yeah uh tom and i have been on we've we've been through events like that before tom's been unfortunately tom's been on both sides of those events before and it's mm -hmm. it's very much not not a fun time for sure um, yeah, a yeah. different department kind of got what sounded like slightly stronger messaging that, that for sure. We, we got kind of wobbly messaging that they're not sure what they're doing with us. A different department got pretty sure that they're definitely going to the other company. Yeah. But that makes sense. I don't know if that's, uh, I don't know if that's going to be our department they're not sure what they're doing or if that's just been like the way the messaging is trickling down so yeah it's 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 hard to tell with that kind of stuff because you're you're kind of left in the dark like you you get the you get the marketing message the internal marketing message of it without knowing what the actual like truth of it is you know uh -huh. and i know and i know even yeah, I know even my superiors don't directly know. Like, maybe two levels up might know some more, but I know my direct superior doesn't, and I know uh, I don't even think two levels up knows much more. It's being done at, like, director and VP levels. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. Like, when... So, the software company that uh, Tom, Lollipop, and I all worked at together at, at, at one point... Um, we had that kind of we 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 had a lot of that going on because you know there had been talks for a long time about whether the company was going to go public or get sold or whatever it may be or get acquired by like another software company and it ended up being a private equity firm and it's because of the nature of the company and the people that work there especially a lot of the the upper management um, it was an incredibly poorly kept secret, um, mm. but it just ended up being one of those things where um, people, people that knew what was going on either couldn't or wouldn't talk about what was really about to happen. And for mm. those of us that knew something was about to happen, it put a lot of us ill at ease just because it's like, okay, we like we know something not great's about to happen. Um, and it was just it was yeah, it was it was a little bit it was a little bit of a rough time and then it actually happened. The way it was handled, we we all agree was um to put it mildly, piss poor. Um, it was just kind of garbage, honestly. Um, and yeah, I've, I was gonna say super shitty. And you know, because you were there, like you you were there I, next to Tom while he had to go through all of it. Yep. Um, and to kind of yeah, give you an idea, was, uh... Tom got a phone call on a Monday morning saying, "By the way, don't bother coming back." Like that was the almost Monday exactly. Morning. 
the Monday morning that he had taken off for his birthday. Yep. Yep, because it was in, it was it was in mid February when this happened. So, yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Yeah, I know. I know the turnaround time is going to be similar to that if we encounter actual layoffs. But um, from what I've heard, their severances are actually pretty okay. So that there's at least that. Um, and I, I honestly, I can't fault them being in finance. The they they pretty much anyone out the door is out the door because they don't want customer information issues sure so sure absolutely. i get it like it if, if if the severance and like taking care of person is okay i'm okay with being out the door with little notice kind right of thing. yeah yeah and that's and that's that's yeah i it's it's a tough line to walk um being in financial services, you're right. There's a lot of considerations that they have to take that, you know, I mean, even a software company doesn't have the same kind of restrictions that that financial services does simply because, mm-hmm. you know, the regulations are so much stricter. Yeah, um, one disgruntled employee could destroy a financial com- company with how yeah. much information, like how much information someone could access and do something with is just... I get it. Like, there's yeah. just no good way to control for that. So, no. I because I've seen them, the buyouts and the layoffs have been. The buyouts are okay because you're you're choosing to do that, but the layoffs have been really quick. Like, someone that day is gone. Yeah. Like, they're not. Hey, you've got two weeks notice or whatever. But rumor mill has said that the severances are at least reasonable so it's at least not like hey you're out the door you don't have a paycheck tomorrow it's you know yeah hey you're out the door but here's whatever how many weeks of whatever how many months of whatever yeah i'm yeah yeah uh so Anyway, for uh, those of you in chat, how how has your week been going so far? Um, uh, and settle down with the caps. One warning, okay. And again, in English only, please. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. Um, but anyway, what about y'all? What's been so going? Well, I was fixing to say, like, uh, sounds to me that stuff, people have reasons to need to practice some self-care. Yeah. Um, and Sydney, you took a mental health day this week. What's, uh. Those are important. Yeah, what uh, what's been going on with you? Anything you want to talk about, or and no, and I'm I am not a psychologist. No. Okay, one last time, English only, please. Sorry, I don't speak I don't speak or understand other languages. Nothing against your language, but it's that's that's what we speak here. So. But yeah, Sydney, you uh, you said you had. You said you were you had to take a. Uh, No worries, no worries. Just want to make sure that everybody here can, you know, we, we are we are uh, U.S. based English channel, so just want to make sure everybody can participate. Uh, yeah, work, work being crazy. Yeah, you're you're kind of having a crazy time at work right now. So I I totally understand taking a, a just a day off. I totally Stop totally get kitty. that. Oh, the yes. kitty! Oh my god, the picture of the kitty like. Okay. All right, folks. That's it. Nope. Okay. We're done. Naps are good, too. Mm. I was seriously considering a nap today. Having my work desk being right next to my uh, bed has many opportunities for me to highly consider naps. Mm, I do like a good nap. Yep. Yep. It's 
pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, I um Yeah. I, um, Tom said he might go to bed early tonight. Yeah, Tom Tom got his second poke yesterday or yesterday yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday yeah. morning. At the, yeah. And so he's Hi, been Andrea. a slug. Yeah. Hi. So we were gonna heat up leftovers and I'm like, no, I'll just order pizza. It'll be fine. Yeah. Yep. I um I he was telling me yesterday he I, cause I pinged him to ask how he was doing and he sent me a message later. He's like, I got up to, to walk to the fridge to get a protein shake out for lunch. And I was too tired to open the door. And yeah. 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 Mm. <laughs> mm. I'm yeah. hitting this topic and I don't like it. Right? Like, oof. It's very, very similar kind of stuff when we were when it was both Elena and I got our shots on the same day as we were talking about last week I think mm -hmm. and it was just oh oof yeah the biggest of oofs yeah oh, oh that's right yep yeah 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 so well yeah but I mean you've you like you said Sydney you've got a lot going on at work so I know that's that's already enough to make you wiped out and then on top of it you know just having to i'm i'm sure that you still had to deal with your patients at home you know the two of them getting their their shots and and helping out around the house so it it can get tiring i get that i totally understand that mm -hmm. <sighs> but yeah it's no fun yeah the second one's second one Chris and I were basically miserable for the day after, not necessarily the day of, but the day after. And um, actually, Robert was probably miserable for a few days after. Like, he was kind of okay at first. He didn't get all of it. But, like, then later this week, because he got his last Friday, and, like, early this week, he was just miserable still. So it's just, like, I think it kind of depends on your immune response. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Which makes me like, really glad we got him the vaccine because if he had like four or five days of reaction to the vaccine, I don't want to imagine what would happen if he had mm -hmm. that kind of reaction to COVID. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in um, it, it does affect everybody differently. You know, I mean. Yeah. I mean, I know that. I. Yeah, I will say, like, I personally didn't have a huge issue with the second one, but I had COVID already, so I think my body already knew what it was doing. Yeah. So it was just boosting those antibodies. Right. Yep, for sure. We were also, uh, the, the person that gave me my shot gave me instructions not to take like any Tylenol or anything unless I was running a fever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. any symptoms that I had, I just dealt with. So <laughs> apparently didn't have to do that, but that's what I did. And uh, that just made it worse. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I wish he had not been told that. Cause I think I would have been much less miserable if I could have even mitigated the headache a little bit. Cause yeah. I'm just whiny if I can't blunt the headache. And it was one of those like mm -hmm. moving was making it worse. I was clenching my jaw because I could feel it. So that was making it worse. So I think, I think it would have been a lot different if I really realized that CDC said it was fine. Yeah, not it was before. like yeah. bordering on a migraine for me. I was nauseous at different points of the day. It was just, ugh. Yeah. I just, Mm -mm. I'm. I'm yeah, I they, was told. I was told only to take Tylenol if I ran a fever. The I, fever was the only thing I could oh. make, do anything for. And and CDC says to not take anything before, but that you're fine to take things afterwards for symptoms that you would normally take them afterwards for. Yeah. Um. I. They just don't want you to like take it five minutes after just to try and blunt the symptoms. You want so, so your body to start fighting it. You don't want to blunt that. But yeah. once you have symptoms, you would be okay to take 
normal amounts of Tylenol or stuff like that. So yeah, that, that would have I completely was... changed my yeah. reaction. Yeah, I was just told not to take ibuprofen, which they also say if you actually have COVID, not to take ibuprofen. So I don't remember what the connect, like what the reaction is, but but yeah, I was told I could just take Tylenol if I needed it. Yeah, that's, that's the good. The only thing I was told, I was told that for a fever, and then I was told I could ice my arm whenever the hell I felt like it. Hmm. And that was about it. Which I, we ended up, we have this that um. We have Icy Hop, but we have it on that roller. And actually using the roller mm. on my arm felt great. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I'm sure. I bet. I'm I'm a whiny one, and I was like, we took my temperature like three times. I really wanted to have a fever. <laughs> I was like 98.7 once, and I'm like, that's like low grade. He's like, that's not a fever. I'm like, I mean, it kind of is for me, because I'm normally not at 98.6, but fine. <laughs> Man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nothing like my 100.7 or 107 fever. Oh my god, Sorry. this one like two years into dating him oh, took Jesus. his temperature and uh, in the middle of the night and I'm like, what was your what was your temperature? And he's like, 107 and I'm like, literally mentally panicking trying to figure out like if I should ambulance him, if I should just try and drive to the hospital, because it's the middle of the night, I'm sleepy, I'm exhausted, and now I'm panicking because I'm like, brain damage, and I'm like, what? We have to, and he's like, point point seven, and I'm like This was in the morning by the way, this was like, in the middle of the night <laughs> oh, That's buddy. my excuse Oh, buddy. That's my excuse Oh, I was very panic. I know how I know how middle of the night you can get because I've had to deal with next day after middle of the night you when you've had to deal with I don't know say like the cat who's anxious peeing on everything and you having to wash it all and being up all night doing that so I know how I know how like no sleep next day you is so I can imagine what middle of the night you is like where you forget one of those one of those mundane little details. And that's with my CPAP. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh, Ooh, boy. Point seven. But I was, like, literally trying to figure out if, like, an ambulance or me would be faster because I was sleepy and didn't trust myself driving. And I was just, like, about to, like, just lose my shit. Yeah. 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 I can. Yeah. Yeah. I. Oh, boy. <laughs> like, lollipops just, like. He's just actually bubbling. Like he's got literal gonna... steam coming out of his ears. I was sitting there. I'm like, I don't know how you're making coherent sentences. Like that's brain damage levels. Like you, you should be dead. <laughs> well, that, that kind of brain damage would explain a few things. <laughs> 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 I feel like, I feel like in super troopers where he, he gets like the, uh, he gets like a snow cone and he's like, I hope I don't get brain freeze. And the female cop is like, mm, I'm not sure you have the required equipment. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's oh so um oh that's a good question how is the sweet cheese cheese loving boy loud oh, he... hold on let me go <laughs> as is he tradition he's been whining today no but he's he such been a... whining at robert and just very whiny today. Oh, but he's such a good boy. He like, is, but he's a whiny good boy. Like he just loves the cheese. Yeah, I will say it has been it has been a solid week now since you've posted pictures of him in the Critters channel. And well, I try not to like hog the Critters channel. But he's such a good boy. He he deserves to be he deserves to have to be shown off. Also, like, can we just, can we talk about, where's the, can we talk about this precious baby? Like, look at her. Look at her just taking her nap up on the shelf. <laughs> what, what a good, what, she's, she's so soft. Did I hear the tiny little meow? I, th yes, I heard a did. tiny meow. Oh. He was he meowed at me while I was taking his picture, so I picked him up, which he was not necessarily 
about. He hates that. Oh my god. Look at oh. him. Look at <laughs> he him. Has he's that look. Like, he's, no ma. Like why? No, I'm leave me alone. <laughs> Could you have at least not used the flash? Oh my god. Oh no, I turned on the whole dining room light. I didn't use the flash. Look, look, okay, I just, because in this picture, I just want us to appreciate how fucking fluffy this cat is. He is very soft. He's so he fluffy. Has just, he has just the best, like, fluffy tail. Oh my god, I know, it's floomph. He's so floomph. <laughs> the, the, the bibis chambers. <laughs> oh my god, he's, he's, he's such a fluff. What a good boy who also loves cheese. Mm-hmm. No. And his And is also making complaints right now. And his yeah, long lost sister who lives on the who who has her spot on the shelf with her little tiger striped tail and her little squinty face while she naps upon up on the bathroom uh, shelf. Like look at her. <gasps> so, all right, like, all right. He's he's done. <laughs> so I think the moral of the story today is uh, kitties are good self care. That's true. That's yes. true. Kitties are good self care. Like Viv. Viv is Viv is good for my self care. He gives me the he gives me the warm fuzzies. Um, he uh he he, he is kind of acting acting a little little John Oliver to you when you're uh, you're his Adam Driver. I mean, listen, I I can't I can't help it if if you know see see Viv 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 and I have a special relationship. It's fine. Sabrina might argue that it's because I'm a hoe, but again, it's fine. Whatever. It is what it is. Oh, <laughs> <gasps> mittens, kittens. Okay, all right. I because because I need to go back, and we we have to go. Mittens, kittens is not happy that other cats exist right now. No, but you know what? But like, freaking, freaking, look at this mittens, kittens though. Look at this majestic baby all laid out in her chair. Like my God. Oh, perfection. She's, she's so Aww. pretty. She's such a pretty mm -hmm. cat. She's just this beautiful Russian blue, and I just. I love her so much. She's such a good kitty. She's yeah. so full of love, and even though she 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 wants and needs her space, she's still a very loving kitty. Such a good yes. kitty. Yes, needs her space. That sounds very much like me. That's true. You 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 also are not used to other kittens in your space. <laughs> I think we've established that you're a cat. Yeah, that we've we've I think we've, been a thing we've talked about. We have firmly established that you are a cat, Helena. Yeah. Meow. Meow. Yeah, see? There you go. You you even you even speak you even speak cat. I'm not sure if I speak cat. I attempt though. You speak cat, it's just a matter of whether or not you care, because you know when you're going to pick up Elliot, if he's like, no, wow, you're like, Willie here, Willie don't care. I think I think you kind of nailed it, though, Lollipop. You said it's it's just whether or not you care, which, as we all know, is a core trait of a cat, whether or not the cat cares. I mean, tell, tell me I'm wrong. I mean... Yeah, but I care way too much about stuff, which is not necessarily cat-like. Ah, but what do you care about? My job way too much. Well... And snacks. And snacks. snacks. Uh, oh, but, yes, my 16 twi Twix success. Oh my god, I, Lollipop told me about that. You got 16 full-size, like, big-ass Twix bars for two bucks? Yes, yeah, so, so what it was, what? was on Instacart, they had... The 36 count box of Twix labeled as a dollar 19, like the box the Twix come in that sits in the aisle no. in the cashier's thing, labeled on Instacart for a dollar 19. No. So I had to try because this is me, and I saw it, and I can't not right. So I will I will put my screenshots in in the crew, but um, so I tried, 
And so my Instacart driver messaged me and was like, hey, did you want one or did you want 36? And I'm like, I mean, it said it was the 36 box for $1.19. Like, let me, you know, I had to take a shot. And he was like, and then he messaged me back, but I was still at work. He's like, they only have 16. And I just never messaged back because I had gone back to work and I, I didn't look at my phone. And so arrived 16 Twix. And indeed, my receipt shows only a dollar nineteen charge. Can I can I show the screenshot like cropped yes. off? Okay. Yes. Because this. Yes. Like it's true. Thirty six. <laughs> Thirty six. It. I mean, it's it says it right there. Yeah. Like it says it's the thirty six count. I figured maybe I would get one. And I wouldn't care because I would pay a dollar nineteen for one Twix worth a shot to try and get thirty six. Oh my god! But I had to try. I mean, like I can't not try. I like Twix; they're one of my favorite candy bars. Not maybe not like my top favorite, but they're like up there enough. Well, what I think happened was someone was scanning and they scanned the box instead of the individual doohickey. Well, they done fucked up. Yeah. But like, but th but that's the thing, though. That's the thing. They also have like the box image here, so that was cataloged that way. Also, yes, so, I noticed the cosmic brownies too. Don't think I didn't notice the cosmic I brownies. Right to say, oh, cosmic so brownies. We, got, we, needed, uh, we needed to get egg whites, and Walmart wasn't gonna. <sighs> they didn't have them in our order, so I had to find a bunch of junks junk to get the egg whites from Publix and this is what happened. They make but, they make Nutella filled Oreos. Right? I haven't tried them yet. What? But I, oh um, my yeah, god. Oh what? my god. This is this okay, is fantastic. So it's still on um it's still on Instacart that way. Is it really? Yep. I, I just linked it in, in the crew. Like I just went and looked. It's still List it that way. I gotta see this. I got. I gotta fucking find out. <laughs> We're. <laughs> so wait, what? What grocery? Shut store? the fuck up! It is. Pub oh my god. Publix. Oh Publix. Yes. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> the box like... is a buck nineteen. I'm gonna send this to Sabrina, and she's gonna be like, "That's too much." And, but I don't care. I don't. I don't even eat Twix. But do you need to for a dollar nineteen? Like, like I just, I just. Holy shit! It's the same here in North Carolina. So I, oh I mean, if you're gonna make a grocery order already, like, why not throw that on and see what you get? Worst case, someone is smart and only gives you one Twix, and you have one Twix best case like in my scenario they buy out the store which in my case was 16 <laughs> viv viv look at look at yours and see look look like look at instacart look at stores around you and see Netflix. it they may it may be an instacart error i don't know oh so let me check a different <laughs> store here then i just okay, okay, right. i sent it to go. sabrina um i sent her the link and i'm like the box is a dollar 19 she goes oh dear <laughs> All right, let me check at Food Lion here. Food Lion! Oh, I've been to a Food Lion in fucking 15 years. I don't even see the box listed at Food Lion. Probably well, because it's not supposed to be listed. At a buck 19, I could, I could, buy, I could buy a box for everybody um, individually. You could have a box. Andrew could have a box. Gwen could have a box. And then we would still have a box. And we would still spend less than 10 bucks. That's too much. I'm going to say it now. That's too much Twix. <laughs> Everyone gets a box. I'm just saying, how could you, if you were already making a grocery order, how could you not try? I mean, honestly, like, though, like, uh, I can't even be I mad about now, worst it. worst case, they wouldn't get me anything. And I, Instacart has always refunded anything I didn't get. So I would get refunded my $1.19 and... Whatever, like... Like, really, those, those I, are the the only three options are you get 
you you get the refund, you get a single for a dollar nineteen, or you get the box. That's it. Like <laughs> or some ridiculous amount. Like, or someone apparently just grabs all of them that they have in the store. Doesn't amount to doesn't amount to a box, but who cares? You still got that many of them for fucking two bucks. So Food Lion Food Lion is is more yes, it is more like Kroger than it is Piggly Wiggly. Um, Food Lion is a little bit bigger. It it actually I think Food Lion, who are they owned by now? I wanna say where I think is... they're owned by the same company as Kroger because I think the last time I went in, I saw stuff with a Kroger label on it. I think so too, and I'm looking to verify right now, but I think they, I think they are now owned by the same. Let's see, where are they? Um, Kroger brands. Where are the brands? Chains. There we go. Um. Oh, maybe not. But anyway, looking here, it's only Publix that has the box of Twix like that. It, it wouldn't surprise me if Publix screwed it up in their catalog somehow and hasn't noticed. Mm -hmm. But I... If it was like a mom and pop shop, I would have called and been like, hey, you have your listing screwed up. But I have no shame in, in trying to see if a corporation will give me something silly. Well, I mean, you're letting them know that something's screwed up in the best way possible. By exploiting <laughs> their mistakes. That's true. <laughs> and sharing it with a wide audience. For okay. anyone yes. who has Publix, go <laughs> get yourself some Twix. Spread it. Spread feel, the good word. Because the like person the person twix. shopping doesn't really care. They're just like, I don't know. I'm just here to check things off a list, whatever. So, oh. Now I'm curious. I wonder if they did this with other like boxes of candy. I didn't even think about that. So here's here's okay. an interesting thing about the food lion. And this this is something very hyper local for you, Allie. Um, in twenty eighteen that the Kroger like like the regional Kroger subsidiary there announced that they would specifically be leaving the Raleigh Durham area and they closed and sold off the stores that they had. And eight of them became Harris Teeters. One ended up actually becoming a food lion. So you may actually have the food lion that mm -hmm. used to be the Kroger, which would explain why there's still Kroger okay. products in it. That's true. Publix will do that. If, if Publix advertises something and it's wrong in the system, they will give it to you. They won't give it to you for the advertised price. They will give it to you for free. They will absolutely do that. They That's happened with us before. I've searched a couple candy bars, and I haven't found anything else. Fred Meyer is owned by Kroger. Like... Fred Meyer is owned by Kroger. Gotcha. Yep. But, uh... Yeah, so that was because I was just like trying to find. I, wow. I needed to get the thirty-five for free shipping because I refused to pay eight dollars for shipping when I have a subscription with them. And I'm like, I'm sure I can find some stuff that will get eaten eventually. Yep. And so th thus the Twix capades began. Yep. <laughs> like I mean, you know, <laughs> I because I told Chris, I'm like, so if you see a Twix box. They say it that the whole box is only a dollar nineteen, and I don't believe them. So if you see a box, I didn't just spend like twenty bucks on a box. I literally just you spent a buck twenty. Trying, I spent a buck yeah. buck twenty on it, and he's like, to be to be fair, I wouldn't have been mad if he had spent twenty bucks on a box of Twix anyway. I mean, I honestly, would be mad like... if I spent twenty bucks on a box of Twix, but he wouldn't have cared. But I just felt the need to explain myself, and he's like, I mean, I like Twix. They're like my second favorite. I'm like, all right, cool. So we'll see what happens. But what's your what's your what's your favorite lollipop? Reese's. Yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah, you love your peanut butter cups, yes. don't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You really do. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's that's you know, I think this is actually a good segue now that we've gotten completely in the weeds or in in the produce section, as it were. Um, <laughs> that the candy aisle. Let's be honest. That's. Fair point. Um, <laughs> that's. I think that is a perfect example of doing something that is. It is just a a good little something 
that self care. Um, you know, I. So Sabrina, one of her like what her best friend is, she's a nutritionist, um, and she's you know she knows all about healthy eating and 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 you know maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Um, but her thing is, you know, if it's something that make like eating healthy is important, but if there's something that makes you happy, like don't deprive yourself of something to make you happy just in the name of you know healthy eating and nutrition like of course with anything don't go overboard but you know like Mm -hmm. having those little snacks like like again lollipop loves his 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 reese's cups that's that's a little thing like my my craisins i i mean the craisins are it's a fun gimmick that i use on the channel it's you know it's fine but i actually love them and i you know i snack on them some during the day today for lunch i got hot dogs I had hot dogs delivered by fucking DoorDash, and you know what? Is it healthy? Fuck no, it's hot dogs. It's tubed, processed <laughs> fucking meat, and I had, like, um, fucking chili sauce on one of them, um, and I had, what else did I have? Oh, I had the lemon rice soup, too. That's healthier but also delicious but like stuff like that like yeah i could i could spend all week making sure that i'm i've meal prepped or have stuff here at the house that i could easily make or whatever and that would be fine and sure it would be healthy but like you know i i wanted something to just i needed the hot dogs because it made me feel better and thank you sydney i appreciate that um like i just you know, it's 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 those little things, um, and I know we talk about food here all the time because, god damn it, if I'm not all about food, um, ooh woo, ooh woo, <laughs> uh, no, Viv, they weren't that big, um, but I know that we I know that we talk about food here a lot, but we. I mean, it is it is something that brings me joy. It, it it does make me happy. And that's, I think that's one of the things that's been really hard for me during all of this is now we're coming up on the second year that we haven't been able to have our annual cookout. Um, mm-hmm. And for me, that's, that's, that's a huge thing because, you know, like, I know that Sabrina being an introvert, you know, being around people like it, it, it's, it takes a lot of energy out of her to be around people a lot. And she has to do it all day long at work. You know, she works for a school. So she's dealing with, you know, she's dealing with teachers and other people in administrative capacities. She's got students, she's got parents coming in and out all day long. So she's got, she's got a lot of people interaction that she has to, to deal with all day long. And I know for her, you know, it's, it's, she doesn't want to be around she needs that downtime to recharge um Mm -hmm. me being the opposite you know i i haven't been around people in large groups in over a year now and it's just it i need to be around people to like feed off of their energy and like rebuild my stores and i we've talked about this a lot at length but that's why i started streaming is because this is a way for me to bring everybody together and i get a little bit of that energy you know it's it's not the same as having people mm-hmm. physically in the room with me but it's you know this is this i started this as a way to kind of feed that self care need that i had um when i i started this in, in mid november now actually i think today in fact let me go back and look but I think today is the five month mark of the stream. Um, let me double check real quick because let's see. So the first, okay, so tomorrow will be five months. The first day was November 23rd. Um, so just doing this, I had to leave behind some stuff. Um, that I had been working on a uh, couple of folks that I worked with that were on my immediate team um, at, at my previous company um, we decided to get together and start like a side thing we had you know an idea for a big product we were going to work on and I was going to be the only developer hi NS by the way I'm not ignoring you bud 
Um, but like, I, I just want to, you know, I, I, I wanted to, to work on that and, and build that thing with them. And it got to be to the point where, you know, it was exhausting before the pandemic started because I was the only developer working on this big side project for the startup we were trying to get off the ground. Plus I was having to work full time because I still got to pay bills. We didn't have any money. So it was literally just a labor of love at that point. Um, and then the pandemic hit and I just like, like the first couple of weeks of it, I'm like, okay, this is, this is weird. This is different, but I can, I can deal with this. And then I just kind of crash and I'm like, I can't deal with this. This is, this is too much for me. Cause again, I'm used to being around people. Like even before the pandemic started, I was only remote half of the time. So two or three days a week. I'm in an office, I'm around people, like I see Lollipop, you know, I, I've sat next, or sat next to him at work, we would go to lunch together, I'd walk over and talk to the rest of our product team over in their, like their little area that they had, and just hang out with them, and you know, just again, being around people, that was my way of recharging, so doing the halftime remote thing worked out really well for me, because half of the time I didn't have to deal with the commute, and the other half of the time, at least I was around people, and could, you know, recharge that way. And so after all of this started, like, I, I barely had the energy to get, you know, work stuff done, which really sucked because we had, like, a couple of really big projects that we had to crunch on at the beginning of the pandemic because of the nature of what we do to try to help out our members or the people that we actually, you know, build stuff for. So we, um, you know, that was... That was a little bit of extra draining on me because of just trying to get all that stuff done and, and out the door because it was it was that that um, sort of crunch time that we had to, to put in. Um, and then as time went on, I'm like, I like I, I I can I can do work, but I can't do work and this other thing. Like I was struggling with the other thing beforehand, so I certainly can't do it now. And so that's when I finally, you know. And again, after I talked to Tom, and Tom's like, I've been fucking telling you to do this forever, is what he said to me. <laughs> but, you know, that's why I decided to do this. And, you know, Viv, you're absolutely right. That's exactly why I did this. And I get to I get to talk to people. I get to, to hear from people. Re I've reconnected with some old friends. Um, and, like, folks like, like you know, Andrea, I, I haven't seen... I haven't seen her in coming up on two years now because she she's she's northwest. I'm southeast. So, you know, we're literally thousands of miles away from each other. But I can't, you know, I, I, I can connect with her here in a way that it's it's different. You know, um, it's it's just a way that I haven't been able to do that with with people before. So it's been really nice to do that. And so now. This is this is sort of my recharge. This is what I do. And even like on days where I'm dead ass tired, like I come in here and I like I kind of drag myself into the office and I start to do like show prep and get everything ready. So like getting the stream info set up and getting OBS running and making sure that all of the the sound stuff is good and and doing all of the, like your lower third and your middle seventeen, and all of all of all of all of the <laughs> fractions and locations in between, and making sure all of that stuff is ready, um, you know, like dragging myself to do that. It's like it starts off being, you know, I get tired, but then like as I do it, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna see people, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to people, like like the the fact that I have like l literally every stream ex and. Um, since like January, basically, I've had, I've had Lollipop and Elena in my ear for almost every single one of those. Um, and like, terribly sorry about that. No, or Ken and Tom. <laughs> no, like that's 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 like knowing that that there are going to be people here, and I'll be able to actually like talk to people and interact with people and hear them, and like it's just. It's been, it gives me that, that like boost of energy that I need to get the stream going. And then once it's going, I'm like, I'm, I'm wired again. So, you know, once, you know, 10, 11 o'clock rolls around, whatever time we end up 
you know, shutting things down, depending on the night. Like, I'm just, I'm wired. I'm ready to go. And then I have to go to bed because Sabrina's already in bed. <laughs> She's got to be up at 630 in the morning um, on weekdays, on school nights. So, you know, I have to go to bed and I, 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 I got to make sure that, you know, I'm trying to, to relax and make sure that, you know, I'm not keeping her awake. I don't want to, you know, like jolt her too much from just being like so, you know, wired and so it's 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 been a tough balance, but you know the 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 benefits have like greatly outweighed the sort of I don't want to say sacrifices, but like just the the weird schedule that I've had to take up now from you know in the sort of like the weird energy fluctuations that I've had. At least I'm getting some of that back now, instead of like dragging through stuff and trying to just power through it. Um, and I mean, like we were talking about earlier, there are days when I have, you know, I have no motivation to do work stuff. Just don't want to do it. Like this week, God, this week has been bad. I just do not want to do anything this week and it sucks, but I, I just want to make sure that, you know, I've, I've got the energy to do things the right way. And sometimes I just don't, but doing the streaming stuff has really been that way for me to to recharge some um you know like ns i i used to do i mean you, you know this because i i did radio and i miss doing the broadcast stuff so now i'm doing broadcast stuff again in you know in, in a new evolution and in a different way but it's at its core it's still the same concept I'm creating content and I'm sending it out for people to be able to consume. And I, I, I just love doing that. Um, and I just, it, it, it reminds me of when I, you know, used to do the radio stuff or, um, when me and an old roommate of mine, we had, we had a star Trek podcast that we broadcast every single week where we would watch <clears throat> star Trek and we would we would basically riff yeah. on it just like Mystery Science Theater three thousand, um, and it was it's the most like it's the most like stereotypical nerd thing to have the Star Trek podcast, but we did it, and I enjoyed it. And like it was Friday nights, so I didn't have a Friday night. I I wasn't going out and doing stuff on Friday nights. And eventually, it got to the point where I did need to get out more and do it, um, but like. I just enjoy doing that so much, like getting all the video stuff set up and getting everything ready. And it just, I, I love that. And so now that I'm doing it again, it's, it's been that sort of thing that I need. Um, do I miss doing the startup stuff, the coding stuff? I do. Um, did I struggle with it because I felt like I was letting them down? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like to this day, I still feel like, I have let them down in a way because I'm again, nothing's getting done on it because I was the only one writing code. Um, cause there were only three of us mm. and the other two aren't, they're not software engineers. Um, so it, it, that was, that's been incredibly like difficult weighing on my mind, but I really had to make the decision. Like, was I going to continue to like push myself and do this thing and basically just run myself completely ragged, run on empty for months and months and months until God knows when I can actually get out of the house again? Or was I going to take a step back and take care of myself first? And I had to make that difficult decision to do that. I, mm. I, it's something that I've, I've been telling people and friends for years and it's really only been in the last few years that I've really started to listen to my own advice. But the thing that I like to say is, if you're not good enough to yourself, you're not going to be any good to anybody else. And what I mean by that is, we all have people in our lives that we care about, people that we love, people that we want to take care of. Um, that's just human nature. We all have people that we care about. And when you're not taking the best care of yourself first, you can give a lot of yourself to other people. But again, when you're not giving back enough to yourself, 
you're basically like you have so much that you start with and you keep giving to other people and giving to other people and then you start to run out of what you can give to others. So you have mm -hmm. to take that time to give back to yourself so that you can you can be, you know, be there fully for the people that you love. Um and it's it's been really, you know, it, this, again, this past year, you know, it, it's, it's been the year of stepping back and, and, and reprioritizing. Yep. Sydney, that's, that's exactly right. You can't fill everyone else's cup if yours is empty. And that's, that's exactly it. You know, you have to take the time to refill your own cup before you can help fill up the cups of others. Cause you can't give from an empty cup. It's just, it's not possible. So the way that I see it is, you know, I have a really hard time prioritizing stuff for myself. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really bad about that. And I know that certain people, Elena, uh, also struggle with this too, um, because we have a tendency when, you know, when anyone, even anyone close to us mentions anything or, or e even like a subject comes up we immediately try to shift the focus to focus on that person and be like, okay, what do you need or what can I do for you? Or what would you like or whatever it may be? Cause that's the, that's what, you know, she and I are a lot alike in that way. Like we love to take care of the people and do things for the people that we, we love and we care about. Um, but I'm feeling very attacked right now. Am I wrong though? I, I'm just feeling very attacked right now. That's that's not a no. Um, so <laughs> so when you know when we when we want to do these things for these people, you know we we have to tend, we have to remember to shift that focus back to us a little bit. And it doesn't have to like, and this is this is not anything about being selfish, about being, you know, just seeing yourself as better or above anybody else's needs. It really is just about making sure that you have what you need, so that you can give others what they need. And and my point is this: what I like to do is I always remind myself that I know that. The people that I care about, that I love, deserve the very best. They do. My people, I want to make sure they always have the best. If I don't at least give myself what I need from myself, then I'm not giving the best to them. And that's not fair to both them or myself. Because then I have unrealistic expectations of myself. And... I feel you bad. Never hush your mouth, and <laughs> and I'm not, you know, I'm 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 not giving them the very best of me because I'm not at my best. So that's what I keep reminding myself is I need to be at my best so that I can be best for them. Um, and again, sometimes it's sometimes it's little things. Like, you know, Reese's Cups, or in my case, Craisins, or Cream Eggs, or, mm -hmm. you know, ordering hot dogs for lunch and Outback for dinner. <laughs> so you know what I had to eat today. Um, sometimes it's big things, like, you know, completely changing what your priorities are in life, you know, both short and long term. Um, like this, I, I decided to give this a shot. I decided to try it out and see how it worked. You know, see how I liked it. <gasps> Hi, Alley Pop. Um, and yeah. the again, you know, Elena, you 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 said it earlier. You know, this is something that I knew that I had um, a, a experience with doing just from a, a general broadcast level. So it was something that you know. I, hell like this this microphone and my audio setup i've had that i've had that for years because you know i'm already doing that so really all i have to do is grab a camera plug it in and start the broadcast um and then like the stuff around me this stuff down here and this stuff over here like that you know i've got it 
I used to be a graphic designer in a previous life. So, you know, one day I threw this stuff together to, to put a frame around me and to have sort of like that almost classic broadcast look because that's just my style. And I knew it was something that I wanted to, to give like an actual shot. And did I agonize over it for months worrying about whether it was going to be successful or, you know, if I was doing it right? Yeah, you're goddamn right I did. I still do. I'm still concerned about that. Every single night, every single night after the show, I wait the 10 to 15 minutes to get the email from Twitch to see what the the statistics are for the broadcast that night. And do I pour over them and try to figure out what I can do better? Yeah, I absolutely do. Because that's just how I am. Make a job out of your hobby? Again, hush your mouth. Um... <laughs> But, but am I wrong though? To quote you, but am I wrong though? I just said hush your mouth <laughs> <laughs> to take a page out of your book. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on, hold on, lollipop. What am I doing right now? What am I doing? I'm, am I doing the thing like, like you said that I do? Because of the way the, the monitors see him are right now. What is he doing? <laughs> Did I? Yeah, do you're looking right at her. <laughs> well, she's not over there, so you're not actually looking ah, at her. But, but close ah. enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was looking in the direction of where she normally is. Yeah, I had to run off and well, I didn't have to, but I ran off to do my work thing and see if by chance there was an email and there was not, and I didn't really expect there to be, but I wanted there to be. Okay, so a couple of things. One, Andrea, you you want me to have better analytics because you, I swear to God, one day we're just gonna have to sit down, you and me, and I'm I'm just gonna let you pour over the data because I know that you're gonna like data? once you get into it, you're gonna love it. Oh, the analytics for the channel, yeah. So Andrea, by trade, uh, she does digital marketing. So like numbers, charts, graphs, data points for how marketing campaigns or anything with any kind of like, you know, like marketing focus around it that's her bread and butter and she's damn good at it so we like i sent her screenshots one time of the analytics page she's like this is garbage and i'm like the way it's presented is garbage there's a lot better data underneath she's like they're goddamn better be because this is trash <laughs> but that's again that's what she that's what she does for a living so you know she knows this shit um but just being able to to you know s like sit there and like look at all of this stuff and figure out how I'm doing and stuff like yeah I do agonize over it but that's again that's what I do like I'm as Elena like to say I turn my hobby into a job which whatever it's fine if I'm gonna do something I want to do it to the best of my ability um, again, the audacity of calling me out like that. Right? How how very dare you, madam? How very dare? <laughs> um, I mean, if you're going to attack me, I'll just dish it right back if you walk into it like that. Wow, thanks a lot. But I would also argue that this whole concept of turning your hobby into a job can still be healthy as long as you're maintaining balance and boundaries with it. Yes, and that's and that's the important thing. And I, we, you know, we talked a couple of weeks ago about boundaries, and we talked a lot about external boundaries, but we have to have our own internal boundaries too. That's another part of self care is you know recognizing that you have boundaries of your own for yourself that you need to have. And respecting your own boundaries for yourself. A jobby. That's, it's true. It's true. You know that, fellow Capricorn. You know that very well. Sydney Sydney and I are very much alike. It's almost frightening. She's, it's almost, she's almost like girl me. It's really weird. Um, but it's also why we understand each other so well. Um, mm -hmm. But... You're right. Like that's and that's that's something that I had to recognize fairly early on with this too is, you know, I did this thing to help myself to 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 improve my mental health. Um but I also have to make sure that I don't turn it into something that I hate. Like coding? Mm -hmm. Like coding is something that I did for a hobby for 20 years. I did coding as a hobby for 20 plus years. And I wanted to do, I didn't want to do it as a job because I, I wanted to make sure that my hobby stayed 
you know, enjoyable and fun. And eventually I got tired of doing IT and I'm like, well, I only know one other thing and that is code. That's, that's it. That's what I got. Um, so I did it and I don't want to do it as much of a hobby anymore. Thus why I was coding all day at work and doing the side stuff and getting kind of, you know, exhausted doing it. Cause I'm like, I'm doing so much code. There's so much. And that's not to say I don't love to code. I do, but like I'm doing it all day long. You know, it's like that's it's, 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 it's taxing. Like it, it takes a lot out of me. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel that way about teaching. I love to teach. I love it. But all day, every day. It's a lot. Yeah, I can I can imagine it is. Like, <laughs> you know, it's two it's it, in two very different ways, it ends up having, you know, a very similar effect. Mhm. Um Yeah, it's it's it can be physically exhausting, but it's it's very mentally exhausting. And, you know, yeah, anywho. Yeah. My brain's going all down all kinds of avenues, but you know, it's I do understand that because, you know, you go to school to become a teacher and like I was kind of resistant to it at first, but it was something I recognized that I did naturally with people when they needed help, like I, I had that kind of attitude about things and so I thought, okay, well, I seem to be naturally good at this to a certain extent, but it's way different once you turn that into the full-time gig. Yep. Yep. Um, I've actually considered doing something like that. So uh, I considered going back to school and getting my master's in um, software engineering or some kind of IT master's or something like that um, so that I could be a professor and do that. And I thought, you know, mm-hmm. like as rewarding as I think that could be, I don't know that that's where my passion is. Um, and it's, I, I just, I don't, I don't think I could do that. I don't, I don't think I would be Mm -hmm. as successful at that as I am actually still coding all day long. Cause like I enjoy the problem solving and I don't know if I would be as good at helping others, you know, understand the concepts as I am at solving problems, you know, on my own. Um, (laughs) Your form of teaching is just going to be to write documentation and tell them here, read the docs. <laughs> but you know what, though? You know what, though? It works. It's it, mm. like you you joke, but it works. Mm, I think it has about a 50% success rate on your team. From that's, what I heard. That's, that's not an issue with that's not an issue with the documentation. <laughs> that's an issue with the student. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know what you're your saying. Success rate is not 100%. Uh, the documentation's success rate is 100%. <laughs> every, every person who has read the documentation has found it helpful and it accomplished, helped them accomplish what they needed to accomplish. I have multiple reports of that. It's just you have to actually read the damn thing. But that's a different subject. Um, <laughs> yeah, Sydney, I, that's, 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 I, that's the other thing. Like, I'm... I have a really bad tendency to take on other people's stuff. Um, I like I've always been the person that everyone confided in, everyone talked to about stuff. Even people that I don't know well, they'll talk to me and they'll tell me their life stories. I'm like, why are you talking to me? I'm I'm large and hairy and and like I look like I would eat you. Why are you telling me these things? Why do you trust me with this information? But it's true like i i that's that's what i've always been you know um and so oh i'm hush your mouth viv you don't you don't know my life (laughs) he kind of knows my life a little bit i'm like doesn't he though but the point is you know i'm i i have a really bad tendency to take on other people's like other people's stuff in like I don't know if I don't know if it's empathy or if I'm just like I don't know, but I I I really do t- like feel a sense of like I want to fix it, like I want to just fix it. I want to make you know I don't want them to 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 have like you know I don't I don't want them to have bad stuff anymore. 
Um, so that's that's another reason why I don't think I could ever teach because, like Sydney said, that's your your kids' problems become your problems. Like I'm, I know this just from Sabrina, and she doesn't even she's not even a teacher. She's you know she's the administrator for her school. So I mean, mm-hmm. she, she keeps the damn place running, but you know she still is involved in the lives of some of these kids. You know she like. God, she has this this one kindergartner who is like who Sabrina's her best friend in the world and <laughs> she like got her parents to buy her a little thing of flowers this week. Like this kid loves Aww. Sabrina. Like it's it, it's adorable. Like oh my god, it's it's um it's just it's it's just the cutest thing in the world how much this kid loves Sabrina. Mm-hmm. Um which I mean, sure, you know, for for good reason, but like Again, I, that's, you know, for all of the, the happy, good stuff, you know, there's always kids that have stuff that, that, that you know, they're dealing with that's, they've got trouble at home or even trouble with school. Yeah. And it's, I, I wouldn't be able to handle that well, I don't think. I, I would, I would mm-hmm. take that too much onto myself. And yeah. Yeah, and that's, again, where you, and I think you even kind of mentioned this earlier, where you have to, again, I say, because it's it's all intertwined, you got to find those boundaries, but also that's how you figure out how to practice self-care, um, which I know you mentioned, you know, Sabrina, she comes home and she has to decompress, right? Like, I'm an introvert, too. There are intense days where I just have to sit in silence, like, whether it be... I just sit in the car for a few minutes and not, you know, like I get out to the parking lot and I just sit and I don't start the car yet. And I look over and I see my colleagues doing the same thing in their cars. You know, it's just, it's finally quiet. Um, So, you know, you find those moments, but, you know, speaking to, I mean, being someone who has always carried other people's weight, you know, kind of that empathy piece like it's difficult but I think I realize that for my own sake sometimes I have to acknowledge and really dig deep and think about what is actually in my control and whether or not I have the best motivations too you know you got to be honest with yourself and that's another form of self-care is to be honest of you with yourself like Do I really want to help this kid because this kid needs me? Or do I want to help this kid because it's going to help me? Yeah. Um, And so I think that's also a really important piece and something that I had to like really, you know, stand back and say, okay, checking my motivation. Why am I so invested in this right now? What is it about this kid? And how do I move forward in a way that keeps both of us, you know, that helps both of us? Because going back to what Sydney was saying, you can't pour from an empty cup. And if you aren't checking your motivations and why you're doing things, you're going to run out of fuel way faster. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And like, like both Ali Pup and Viv are saying in the chat, I'm, I'm the exact same way. Like I'm, I, I feel like that I have to help my people take on their stuff and help them through it. And if I'm, if I don't, then I'm not being a good enough friend. And I've, I've had to back down mm-hmm. from that because it's at that point I'm being, I'm, 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 I have unrealistic expectations on myself. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, that's not to say that we can't help our friends through stuff. Of course we are. That's what, that's what friendship, that's what any relationship is all about is, you know, having that, 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 Oh, I'm trying to think of how to phrase it. Like having that sort of reciprocal, you know, sort of looking out for each other, you know, and that's, that's any, any relationship, any, you know, any healthy relationship is going to have that. You just have to make sure that you're doing them in healthy amounts in both directions, you know, Mm -hmm. um, I, and I, I don't like taking my problems to other people like Sabrina. I trust her more than mm-hmm. anybody in the world. And I don't like talking to her about stuff a lot of the times. Cause I know she has so much of her own stuff that she's dealing with. And I don't want to put more undue stress on her. And so that's, that's been another thing with me that I've had to like 
you know, kind of deal with and get through is, you know, learning that I need to do that. Like at least some Mm -hmm. learning where those limits are, where those boundaries are and making sure that I, you know, I do it in, in a way that's, you know, both healthy for me, but also respectful and healthy of, of her needs and, and her boundaries. Um, mm-hmm. I, and, you know, when we talk about it, there's, there's also the flip side of it where, you know, we have, everybody's had people in their lives that aren't necessarily, you know, whether intentional or not, um, they have people in their lives that, you know, their relationship is not always healthy. Um, Mm-hmm. So we have people that we care about and that we love, you know, like I've, I had a friend of mine telling me recently, you know, they have someone who's their best friend and, you know, they care about them very deeply because that's, that's what you do with a best friend. You love them and you, you take care of them. But, you know, very much like me um, and like, you know, a lot of us here, they you know, want to just give and give and give and they don't get back in return. In fact, sometimes they get back mm-hmm. a lot of negative um, emotions mm-hmm. and and actions in return. Um, and, you know, that's sort of like the dark side of self-care is where we're trying to put ourselves out there and, and be that loving, caring person for the people that we, that we love. Um, and they're you know they either they don't recognize it or they do and they're not respectful of our boundaries or um uh Mm -hmm. they're not respectful of how you know we would like to be treated in certain scenarios um we talked about we've talked you know a couple weeks ago about the platinum rule where we should always treat someone as they would like to be treated and a lot of times people don't you know recognize that and again it's not always intentional, you know, sometimes people just don't recognize that they're, they're, you know, not, not treating people with, with the respect that they, they deserve. Um, especially in those scenarios where someone's putting themselves out there and, um, Mm -hmm. that's one of the hardest things to have to do is, you know, sit down with someone like that. And you have to be firm with them and, and lay out your boundaries and, and say, you know what, this, what you're doing, this is not okay. And sometimes mm-hmm. it just takes you bringing it up to them so that they consciously recognize it. And they say, you know what, I, I see that. And I, now that you've mentioned that, I understand. And, you know, they, they make that, that conscious effort to change and, and you know, do better um, and you know, make that growth. Sometimes it's, you have to get a little more difficult where, you know, Mm -hmm. if that doesn't work, you have to, you know, remove those people from your lives. And Mm -hmm. I've had to do that before. And I'm, I'm sure people have had to do that with me where I'm just, you know, I'm not the right person to, I'm not the right kind of person for their lives. And whatever it is that I may have done or, you know, the way I behaved or whatever it may have been, um, that just, it wasn't, it wasn't right for them. It wasn't, it didn't, I I didn't do it. You know, I wasn't being respectful of their boundaries or, you know, of their needs. And we've had to go our separate ways. And I, again, I've had people like that. I'm sure people have felt that with me because it, it happens. Um, Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm a very strong personality. There's, I'm, I'm a lot. I'm, I am a lot TM. Okay. There's, I'm, I'm fucking Ooh. a lot. Um, I know, right? Me. Um, but I, you, it's tough, you know, because I never, like, I'm, I care about my friends with, about my people very, very deeply. And, you know, I never want to lose any of those people. Um, but again, sometimes those are the difficult decisions that we have to make. And we have to let them know either, you know, hey, this is wrong. And this is not respectful of me, of my boundaries, of how I, how I you know, 
need or want to be treated. Um, or even, you know what? I'm sorry, but I cannot continue to have someone like you in my life. If this is the way that you're you're going to to you know treat me or, or, or whatever it may be, um, and I mean, you know, sometimes again, it's it's not something extreme necessarily where that comes down to. It could just be like little things here and there that build up. Um, you know, we talk about you know we have the idiom the the straw that broke the camel's back, and that's it. Really, is just. Like a little, like little tiny things just build and build and build. And eventually it becomes too much for someone to bear. And at that point, you know, that's when you have that breaking point, you have to make the decision. Am I going to let this continue to affect me or am I going to do something about it and, you know, remove this, this negative influence, this negative whatever from my life to, so that I can actually move on with mine and, 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 Mm -hmm you know, be well instead of, you know, continuing to, to allow something like that. And it's just, it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. And I think, I think the difficult thing too is, you know, you were really emphasizing like setting those boundaries, but I mean too, like sometimes like if it's better for you, just say, Hey, this is why I'm stepping away and step away. Yep. And if they figure it out, cool. If they don't, you know, that's on them. But I think that sometimes, and again, it's that empath empath piece where you think you owe it to that person to see them through something. And it's sometimes not your battle. It's just, it's not your battle. It's their battle. If they can get through it, you're there, but... You know, you can't, you know, we talk about, oh, we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. But I mean, sometimes you you have to burn that bridge. You have to burn that bridge and you can't burn yourself in the process. Yep. Because people hang on and they hang on and they hang on and the bridge is burning and they get burned themselves. And then it just creates this cycle where then you go and you seek that again because that's just what you think you're supposed to be and you know it it creates a cycle and if you can recognize that and step away before you get burned it's less likely you'll continue that cycle too yep um yep next time you'll say hmm you know what here's here's what's not cool and i've gone through this before and i'm 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 done with that kind of stuff so yeah you know i you know i definitely feel that just just growing up with some of the absolute mess that some of the people where I grew up around, like I see that in somebody now and I'm like, you know what? That is not worth my time. Yeah. You could be a lovely person otherwise, but I have been there, done that. And it's just not worth my time. Yep. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I think for me, again, just because of my nature, because of how, how I'm wired, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, especially in the past I've, I've agonized over, you know, in those situations, it's like, what have I done wrong? What am, what, what have I done wrong to, to elicit this? What, what could I do differently to, to make this better? And I mean, sometimes it's just, it's not necessarily your battle. Some, and you're right. It's sometimes it's not, sometimes it's just one of those things where I'm, I I need to recognize it make the adjustments that I can make, address it how I can address it, and if it doesn't get resolved, then I move on. And that's mm-hmm. that's incredibly difficult for me, especially with people that I care about. Um, yeah. But it's just, you know, I again, I have, to, I have to look out for myself. I have to think about my needs. I have to think about what's, what's best for me because if I focus so much on... A relationship with one person where I'm not have you know I'm, things are things are toxic things are not you know things are just there's there's not that mutual respect or um, whatever it may be if I'm if I'm having a bad relationship with someone and I'm putting all of my energy into that trying to figure out what I what am I doing wrong what could I do better and I don't recognize that it could be someone else that's you know 
that needs to to, to adjust <clears throat> things on their end, then what mm-hmm. about all of the other people that I care about? Now, I'm not giving them the focus, the attention, or the the love that they need and deserve because I'm mm-hmm. so focused on something over here that I really can't change, you know? Like, it's yeah. it's it's tough. Well, and it's difficult, too, when a lot of times those situations where you have that toxic person person is that they're drawing that attention because they want it. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes in those situations, you can't even blame yourself because, you know, sometimes you're being manipulated and it can be hard to recognize that. It very um, much can. It very, yeah. very much can. And, you know, I definitely know that I've had to, you know, step back or unintentionally step back from some people and realized later how manipulated I was by that person. Mm -hmm. Um, And like how much I was always in their toxic, you know, mood and my mood and how I acted was dictated by their mood and you know it it's a form of you know an abusive relationship so also know that it takes courage to practice self-care and it's okay if you don't get it right the first time it's it can be difficult to step away you know I'm I've had to do that with folks in my family so um I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm distant from my family, but I'm not like terribly close with my family. Um, I'm like, I know that, you know, Ali, you have a, you have a really close relationship with, with your family, uh, especially your, you know, your immediate mm-hmm. family, your parents and your siblings. Um, contrast mm-hmm. that with, you know, say, Elena, you know, you've talked about how, you know, you, you have no relationship with, with your parents because your parents are kind of awful. I'm uh, not sure if at least one of them is alive. I don't know. I haven't checked the obituaries lately. And there you go. So I'm, I'm, I'm in a gray area. I'm now, I will say that for like my parents, I'm, I'm closer to Allie's side of it than yours. Um, because I, you know, I, not that I have a bad, like I have a great relationship with my parents, like with my mom and my stepdad, they're fantastic. And, um, you know, I get, I get all the love and support in the world from them. Um, I'm just, I don't have that same kind of like my relationship with them is just not, it's not normal, I guess. Okay. Um, like, you know, I call my mom by her first name, you know, unless, Unless, you know, something serious is going down. But usually, she'll call me and and she'll go off on some tangent about something and I have to stop her and I go, Paula, what are you doing? Um, so, you know, that's the kind of relationship <laughs> I've always had with her. And, um, but her mother, uh, my maternal grandmother, um, I, I cut her out of my life a couple of years ago. Um, so... For those who don't know, um, you know, I'm, I'm from the South. I'm from Georgia. Um, uh, born in a small town in Georgia. Um, lived there for the first 22 years of my life. And then I moved down here to Florida, to the Tampa area. And um, back in 93, you know, I was seven. And my mom got married to my stepdad. So, I mean, they've, you know, they've been married for almost 30 years now. Um, but they got married and that was a very tumultuous time because, um, it's the, the, the early nineties in Georgia and my white mom got married, my black stepdad. And so that was a real eye opener for me, um, being, you know, seven, eight, nine years old, kind of going through that process and watching my like the true colors of some of my family members really come out um and one of the ones that really opened my eyes the most was my maternal grandmother and um you know this is a woman who's my fondest memories of her as a as a as a young child were walking around her house 
and hearing her screech, don't put your hands on the doors, don't put your hands on the walls, because it would mess up the paint. So that gives you an idea of the kind of person that she is to begin with. Um, but I mean, after years of just watching the way she behaves, watching the way she treated my parents um, after they got married, watching the way she treated my mom after my mom got cancer, and how she said that my mom was using it to get attention, um, and then the way that she talks about my half-brothers, um, who are, they're biracial, and how she had, like, one of her best friends, she told that she only has the one grandson, and when I'm one of three, um, that's the point where I just decided I don't want to have anything to do with her. So, um, you know, she was doing, like, the Christmas and birthday cards as, as grandparents typically do. And one year after I got the card, like I had had finally had enough of her and I called her and I'm like, don't ever talk to me, send me a card, anything ever again. I don't want to have fuck all to do with you because if you can't respect my family, then you're not a part of it. And so she sent one more card and I was pissed and I called her and I specifically told her, I said, when you when you're going to be a racist towards my family when you're going to treat my mother mother like your daughter your own daughter like absolute garbage while she's trying to fight cancer get the fuck out of my life don't ever speak to me again talk to me when you're fucking dead it's 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 not so many words what i told her and that was difficult cuz other than her i don't really have you know grandparent like um, my mom's dad, now they had, they had been divorced for forever. Like I was born and my grandparents were divorced. Um, so, um, my granddad, he passed away a few years ago. Um, and his wife, she has a strained relationship with my mom. Um, so, you know, as far as grandparents go, I'm out. I, I don't really have any left. Like I never got really close to my stepdad's parents. His dad died a few years ago. Um, so it's just his mom and I never really got close to her. Um, so, you know, that's it. And again, being from the South, you know, there's sort of this whole, like this expectation of having like, you know, cool grandparents that are always going to do stuff. And I, I know that's, that's true in a lot of places, but especially in the South, you know, where family is supposed mm -hmm. to be such a, a big cornerstone of stuff. Um, yeah, so to have my, you know, to basically cut this woman off and, and you know, tell her to, to go fuck herself. Again, that's that was a difficult thing to do, but it was a necessary thing. Because she was, she was being horrible and hateful to the people that I truly care about. To my, my parents, my brothers... And I don't speak to my brothers a whole lot, you know. They're they're kind of doing their thing, and I'm doing mine. Um, but it, I'm not gonna tolerate her being, you know, a, a fucking bigot towards them. Um, and was that difficult? Yeah, it was. Even as 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 mm -hmm. terrible as a relationship I had with her, it was still a difficult thing that I had to do. But it was a necessary thing that I had to do. Like, she's my own flesh and blood, but she's also being shitty to my flesh and blood. And I'm, I'm, there's no way I can stand mm -hmm. for that. It's just, I'm, it's not acceptable. And I mean, if, you know, if I don't say something to her, if I don't, if I don't take that, that, that stance and say, you're being a, f a fucking shitty human being, then, you know, it's, I'm not doing what I need to do. I'm, I'm not, you know, showing the love and respect to the people in my family that she's not showing it to. So it's, it, yeah, I, I had a slightly easier time. Well, sort of, of it than you because I have basically just ghosted both my parents because my father and I stopped speaking when I was younger because I told him he was a liar because he was lying. Um, and apparently what you do is you stop speaking to your 12-year-old when they do that. Um, 
<laughs> so that just relationship just poofed. So that that one, I mean, sucked at the time, but wasn't like difficult to disconnect. It just kind of happened. Um, and we've talked like once or twice since then, but he's crazier than ever and there's no point and I basically don't know him so I don't care and my mom I've just ghosted like she can still contact Chris and she does every once in a rare while about like holidays or something stupid um but we just don't respond it's it just goes into a void because it's just it's not worth trying to explain to her because I tried to give her a chance and then kind of realized that like I can't I just I I cannot give mm -hmm. up her truth and her memory of a bunch of stuff in my growing up is different than mine. And while I can understand that, I can't deal with it. Like, I, I can kind of understand it and I can kind of get it, but it's also still not what happened. Yeah. So, like, I just can't really share a reality with her i can at least understand now that we don't share a reality and i i have some mm -hmm. less resentment to her for it but i i can't have her in my life no it, i i have way too yeah. much resentment for what i went through that she thinks she only heard about once and i know she heard about it four damn times yeah like I'm sorry. How do you hear that your daughter was molested four times and I've only do something on the fourth fucking time? And she's like, I only know about it once. No, no, no. I can, I can list off at least three of them. But like, also, also, can, can, also once is more than fucking enough to do something about it. Well, eventually something <sighs> was done, but you know, it, 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 it was a it was a long drawn out process. Locks got put on my doors. Locks got took off my doors because I put I used them against her too. Um, I eventually went to a therapist, and that was the time when she found out that time that she was like, "Oh shit, I have to do something because otherwise they're gonna call CPS on me again." Um, so yeah, <laughs> like she, she's like, "I only knew the once," and I'm like sitting there going, "Well, you found the suicide note." You found this and that happened. You put the locks on my doors. You took the locks off my doors. And then you found out with the therapist. So that's at least like four fucking times. But sure, whatever. So we just don't exist in the same reality. So I don't... I don't... I don't deal with it. And it's just not yeah. worth trying to get her to share that reality. Because all it's going to be is, Well, I'm so sorry. And if I'd known and blah, blah, blah. And no. No, I'm sorry. You're still friends with my ex-stepbrothers and their wives on Facebook. You don't care. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> this is this yeah. is a woman that managed to um get get my Italian ass to be like, "Yeah, no, you this family ain't worth it. You should you should not. You should probably not." <laughs> like <laughs> And I mean, you're, you know, you I I know about you and your family family lollipop. Like you're you're very close to all of your family. Like you, you just said it. Like you're you and your Italian ass family, you know? Like yeah. you talk to your brother constantly. Like you, your brother is is almost like a best friend of yours. Y'all are so close. You know, you have a great relationship with your parents. It's just yeah, yeah. Like he was the reason my mom had like a last, last, last chance because we'd kind of done this dance, but I'd never been patient enough to really. I felt like I hadn't given her enough of a chance. I felt like it was more my anger issues and everything. Mm -hmm. And. In the whole, like, rubbing her master's degree in Chris's face as if that mattered for life experience and, and the you'll understand when you're a single mother and the I only ever heard about it once. I'm just like, and then we were, like, sort of talking and she just became, like, a shitty death newsletter. Like, she told me, like, one of the old cats I'd had with her died and then she told me, like, some random person from my high school something or other died and then my father's second wife died and i'm like i don't know these people i don't like i don't know my half sister much less my half sister's mother like i've met my half sister once when i was like freaking seven i i don't like i feel bad for her but i i don't Who particularly care that yeah. <laughs> her mom died like I, i'm not gonna go send a note to my half sister who i have not seen since i was seven and be like hey i'm sorry your mom died like 
no, that's not what she needs right now. She does not need some random relative popping up from fucking nowhere, especially connected to my father, because literally, as far as I know, none of his three children, because I have a half-brother and a half-sister, my half-brother has a daughter that's one year younger than me, to give you the difference of age gap. Um, and I don't think any of us talked to him, because my half-brother was raised by my father's mother. My half-sister came around once, and my dad was super racist. And... I called him a liar when I was 12. So that was my sin. <laughs> so, you know. Plus, my, my father likes to send me emails occasionally, and he asks if he's a grandfather yet. Which, being that my half-sister had kids when she came around when I was seven, he's been a grandfather since then. So, you know. He doesn't like acknowledging that and you know my niece who's one year younger than me so he's been a grandfather for fucking ever if he would you know actually pay attention hmm. hi i have shitty family and um yeah <laughs> 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 i have issues subscriptions even <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> so that's not what subbing to the channel means that's no that's that's <laughs> not that is nope <laughs> That's, that's that is the wrong channel. That's a, that's that's the wrong kind of subscription <laughs> to the wrong kind of channel. We, you yeah. did, we, we don't want to be We're subscribed to that channel. Unsubscribe. Yeah. <laughs> unsubscribe from those, and yeah, don't do that. Right. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, um, I basically I basically have, but all of that has kind of actually. You guys talk about it being hard to cut people off, and I am oddly the reverse. I'm just kind of like, like it'll hurt for like a day, and then I'm like. Fuck it, they're gone, done. Like, yeah. And I'm sure that's not great. I'm sure that's issues of my own, but I've done it so much at this point between my parents and losing other family. Like, my mom's and her brother had a fallout over my grandmother's death because of shit being taken. So, like, those got cut off. And then I cut off other people when I stopped talking to my mom the first time because I didn't know... I, I knew she was talking stories and I didn't know what was being said. And a lot of things got shared well past what I was comfortable with. Um, So I've just kind of... It's easier <laughs> than not. Yeah. And that's kind of not great either. That's fair. But, I mean, it's for, for better or worse... You didn't have to go through the difficulty of cutting those people off because you never had a a healthy, strong bond with them to begin with, and mm -hmm. I'm and that's certainly not to say that it's a good thing because that's it's that's it's not a good thing, but at least it didn't make it difficult for you to remove those people from your life. Um, no, I don't miss the people. I miss what they should have been. You, yeah, yeah, that's and that's that's exactly how I feel with my grandmother. I'm I'm I I wish that my grandmother had been a grandmother and not not a selfish person who, like your mother, lives in her own reality. Um, and also I will reiterate what Viv said a hundred percent. I, yeah, it's 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 been a time. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, we're done with them for better or worse. We leave it, we leave mm -hmm. Chris's phone getting the texts because that way I do believe that I am executor of my father's or my mom is executor of my father's estate and that I will be, it'll be dumped on me because she wants nothing to do with it because she hates him. Mm -hmm. Um, So I, I leave it for that so that I can pawn it off on whoever and whatever but that's that's the only reason I leave any contact open is basically like I don't care. My mom tried to play the like oh I'll take you out of the world. I don't fucking care. <laughs> the will it's of when you die when you're in your nineties because like your your grandparents were long lived and your your parents weren't your, only your dad died early mom so like I don't yeah, I don't you care. haven't done shit for me so far so what the fuck <laughs> what fucking difference mm -hmm. does it make now? Like I don't. I don't, I don't particularly, I, 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 you know, for a short while before I was fully financially stable, that like slightly worked to like keep me to pay like one wit of attention. But now I'm just like, I don't fucking care. There's really no amount of money that I, that she could have access to that I would, that would find worth talking to her for. Yeah. But she's got a master's degree. She makes so much more money. She's a retired teacher working at Walgreens. 
And, and, and sorry, Ellie, masters. this is why I hate certain English teachers, because she was an English teacher, so... <laughs> That's fair. You are not that English teacher, and I have mad respect for you. <laughs> I just have a, like, internal twitch for English teachers. That's fair. <laughs> That's okay. I had my uh, my senior AP English teacher told me there was no way I was going to pass the AP exam. I was going to fail the exam and fail her class, because she got pissy, because... I mean, I was talking shit, but in my defense, it was, I was not wrong. I was, it was true. But also, I did end up being one of like a small handful of people in the class to pass the AP exam, and I did pass her class. So, really. Hey -yo. Don't tell me I'm not going to do a fucking thing because I will do it purely out of spite. Spite will fuel me until the mm -hmm. day I die. And if if you want me to die, I will live forever out of spite just to go fuck you. God, I wish I was fueled on spite. Mm. I will just not do whatever someone tells me to do, but it's, mm. I have no fuel. I just, like, plant my feet in cement and go sleep. Like, I envy you people who can fuel on spite. Like, oh, yeah, no, I'm... I'm yeah, I'm I'm bad. I'm oh, oh, oh. Yeah. I I don't act on it, but I can be a real petty bitch if I want to be. <gasps> Me too. Yeah, yeah, Viv, Viv, right here, baby, right here. Also, yes, mm -hmm. I am the pettiest bitch. But you know what? I get my point across. Um. Yeah, there was a it was. Not to go into a ton of detail, but part of my thing of like getting away from toxic people was also like leaving the church I grew up in. And <laughs> yes, Boy, don't we all have yes. stories about that? And at the time, I was actually help. Like I had like a small job at the church managing a fund for repairs, and there was a safe box that had the m money and receipts and information in it well i just never ever went back like i didn't do any like i i did not go and tie any loose ends i just decided one sunday morning i'm not going back like got up in the morning i'm not going and so a few weeks later this person that had just been the worst to me my entire life because Girls are not supposed to be smart and intelligent and get educations. And so, of course, I'm intimidating. But he was like, hey, can he first off text my dad? Didn't even reach out to me. I was a grown woman at this time. Text my dad and was like, uh, can you get Allison to give me the combination to the safe? And I told dad, I was like, I'm not giving him anything. <laughs> He, and I'm like, and you can tell him this, but he can take that box and shove it up his ass for all I care. But I never once gave them the combination to it. I don't know what they did to get into it, but I didn't. I'm like, and you know what? I And my excuse was at the time my pastor told me, he's like, I'm putting you in charge of this. Don't tell anyone the combination. Only you and I should know it. And I'm like, okay. That's you were just following instructions. I was following instructions. And I mean who and who so... who is who who in who in a church in who in a church, a, a Protestant or Catholic church, in any Christian church, who is gonna go above the, the, the priest or the pastor, who is allegedly appointed by God himself, also allegedly. Yes. With all the air quotes. Every air quote. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I've occasionally been able to, like, have my petty moments. I could have been nice and made it easy on them, but I had no intention of doing it. Especially because of the person who was asking for that information, because I, I, like, he had just made my life difficult for no reason. Other than... Just for the sake of I doing it. female... Well, I was a female who was not afraid to speak my mind and disagree with him about things. You were you you were not a submissive woman, and that is the problem. And again, yes. also, yes, I think he also hated me because I inadvertently got him fired from being our choir director. 
Boo fucking who. Oh, yeah. That's always... Sorry. I could, like, it's... No, don't be sorry. That's what, this is what this it's is for. Insane. It is insane. And, you know, we talk about self-care and cutting those connections. And I actually, Elena, I like, I get your whole, it was so easy to just ghost them and not worry about it. Because in the case of a lot of the people that were in that church I grew up in, it was so easy to just say, no, I'm not talking to you again, ever. I have no reason to. You yeah. have, you know... I mean, and don't get me wrong, there were people that I genuinely cared about and I knew that, you know, I would miss them in my life because they had always been there. Like, I was, you know, like, I was born in that church. Like, I had been there my whole life up until, like, I was 23 years old. So, I had known these people. They were, like, family to me. But I'm like, you are causing dysfunction in my life that is causing my mental illness to get worse and worse. Yep. Yeah. And because of the nature of how some of you think and feel, if I were to express how bad my mental health is, you would just tell me to, oh, it's okay, just pray more. Or you're not, I'm not doing something, you know? And so, yeah, that, it was, so I do validate that. It, it is easy in some ways. Mine... I say mine is a little worrisomely easy because I don't have that basis of like family. Like family mm. means nothing to me. Like yeah. I have my I have my people, but like I have like and like so it it does I do have to step back sometimes like when friends are having trouble with their more normal families because I have no like I have no understanding, no respect for, no honor for they're your family, so you ought to anything. Even if it's actually, like, mm -hmm. a decent give and take. Like, if there is a give and take over the years, I can logically recognize it. But since I haven't been present for it, I don't really realize it. And, like, it just doesn't... Family connections mean nothing to me. Like, they are, they are no different than any other connection. And I am I am fast to be, like, just fuck them. Like, just I, fast as fuck, right. boy. Like, boy. And... Like, it it off puts, like, I adore Chris's family, but it off puts, like, his mom. Because I don't, I won't fawn or I won't because family, like, you're a person and I have respect for you or you're a person and I don't. And I, like, I don't have that, like, extra mile. It doesn't exist for me. See, but, because yeah. it never existed to me. So, meh. So, Viv, Viv, I think, hit it. And, <laughs> Viv, you put it perfectly. You didn't choose them. And that's that's the thing. Uh, and Elena, for you, I, th part of, I, th I think part of it is because it was just, you know, that decision was not made for you. Um, but me, I, I, I've made these decisions. You know, my family is not the people I'm related to by blood or by marriage. My family, those are the people that I have chosen to be my family. Like Tom, Tom is my family. Tom is my best friend in the world and he's he is he is my brother and I will do anything in the world for Tom and he knows that and I also know that Tom will always respect my boundaries. I know that Tom will always mm -hmm. give me that respect. And that's part of the reason why I have chosen Tom as my family because I know that he will always he will always have that respect. He will always have my back and he knows that I will always have his. He he really is the Statler to my Waldorf. He like we, we're the two old man muppets up in the in the the balcony making fun of everybody, and it's it's true. Like like Ali Pup said, like you know, chosen family is far superior than given family most of the time. And Elena, in your case, like you don't, and I know it it you don't have that f you, you you don't have that familial bond that you you know that a lot of people have um but lollipop lollipop is your chosen family you chose mm -hmm. him and for you mm -hmm. that means 
that means I think for you it means a lot more than it means for a lot of other people simply because you had to choose like you were you were made to choose who your people were like you didn't really have you know your your the people that you were given turned out to be trash so you had to choose people Can and I you return them <laughs> no. is there a warranty <laughs> no there's no no there's a restocking no. fee you don't want to deal you don't want to deal with the paperwork you don't want to go to customer service for that trust me um but like the, the just throw them out in the trash yeah just just the trash just, just put them outside put them out by the curb someone maybe someone will pick them up if not it's fine the truck will be around eventually um but that's that's like for for folks like you, I you know, and I'm not necess- And I'm not, I'm certainly not saying that I understand the feeling from your perspective. I I never could, but I do. I I feel like I have a little bit of that only because like I've never had that kind of you know closeness to my blood relatives. Like I feel like I kind of chose them also, you know, and. I had a rough relationship with my parents for a while. I think a lot of people go through that, and, um, but I, mm-hmm. I, I also did. And you know, it, at some point, I decided to, to, you know, choose to to work on that. And we, and things are great between me and my parents now. You know, I, I love my parents. They're fantastic people. They really are. Um, but on the flip side of that, you know, there are people that I have specifically chosen in to be in my life. And those people are, you know, in a lot of ways more important to me than my parents because I did choose them. Um, you know, I, I chose them. They, they are my people. And I, you know, I will do anything in the world for my people. And if anyone fucks with one of my people, I will hunt them down and I will make their lives miserable. I will find a way to extend their life on this earth and make sure that they are miserable for every (laughs) fucking moment of it because you do not fuck with my people. But my point is, those are the people that I chose. And I love my people that I chose because I chose them for a reason. Um, I like... I I think my main issue is with, like, people who have, like, maybe so-so or semi-decent relationships with their parents and there's been some give Like, I have a co-worker who I know, at least for the longest time, was still on her parents' phone family plan and had help with the car insurance and stuff. So, like, there was some give to her. But there were also some, like, guilt trips about stuff. And I'm like, I don't play the guilt trip game. Like... You wouldn't play this from other people. Like, that's where I fall, like, in this weird range. Like, I just, I don't get it. If you wouldn't put it up with it with from anyone else, why put up with it from family? Like, yep. why like, mm-hmm. why not nip it in the bud? And, and, and she's just like, that's just how they are. We'll be fine in a couple days. And I'm like, I don't, I don't. No. Like, but, I mean. But fucking no. <laughs> like, the, that's, that's just how they are. That's. That is that is that is that is the same kind of b- bullshit mentality as like, you know, oh, boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. That's the same bullshit yep. mentality. No, that's a fucking cop out. It's an excuse, and it's a way to just like dust any kind of bullshit under the rug, under the banner mm-hmm. of that's just the way things are. Now, fuck you. The way things are are pretty shitty a lot of the times. So also, that's our also, job as humans is to make sure we make it less shitty. Also, for the record, boys will be boys is boys doing like really dumb shit like sitting in a corner and eating glue with each other or something like that, not being assholes or worse. Like like jumping off the tire swing at like eight feet over the river or something. Well, I mean, that or like, hurt them, but like or like headbutting each other in the dick or just, just random shit like that. Like it, it being dumb for the sake of being dumb dumb to each other is what boys will be boys should be and bad people use it as a bad thing and i i hate that just it's it's you're totally in the right i just i just i hate all of it and i just i'm blunt and i just don't i just have zero like it is it has lost me friends it has cost me cred not at my current job this was a while ago but like um, I had a supervisor come down at two jobs ago and she was asking about some holiday. I can't fucking remember. 
And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't do anything. I don't speak to my mom. Like, just to me, it's just, it's just whatever. It's just casual. Like, I, do, I just don't care. Like, I'm, I don't hide it. I'm not shy about it. My mom's a piece of shit. I won't, like, say that because, like, language. But I was like, I, I don't talk to my mom. I don't, I'm not doing anything for that. Oh, I'll tell anybody she, that my like, grandmother's a piece of shit. And I don't mind. Like, I'll call her a fucking cunt. Got, I don't like, care. Grumpy with me and, like grumbled and mumbled something and walked away and I had no idea and so like I talked to the one co-worker who like kind of had taken me under his wing and like protected me turns out her mom had died last year I'm like well had I known that I would have not said that because I don't really like sticking my foot in my mouth like I'm at least like if I know like someone just lost their parent or whatever I'm at least like I just don't talk about it like whatever like you care about your parent you lost your parent you're going through grief whatever like my situation isn't their problem but i'm just like casually like i don't talk to my mom and he's like yeah she lost her mom last year and they were really close i'm like why ask me about things that there's only one right answer i yeah. hate this yeah i hate yep. mm -hmm. i hate this yeah mm -hmm. so like i just i don't i don't have any of that typical crap and it just it has driven people nuts all throughout my life because i'm just like i that me she's your mom that means nothing to me like that he's my dad that means nothing like literally they donated pieces of their their dna to make me and did about fuck all else not really but mostly did about fuck all else to make sure i turned out as a good human being summed up did fuck all else because summed up it wasn't pretty great like whatever like i joke that my best friend who's only a year older than me raised me like i literally joke like her and her mom probably are the reason i turned out well like i joke that she raised me because like her and her mom were the only reason i had like good attitudes about anything in high school because i was just like i mean i was being raised by a racist bigoted screamathon so you know it was basically you know it was great so are you saying that the only thing that they've contributed to you are your stats and you would like a reroll? Uh, yeah. Yeah, also the whole, like, I've known you for ADD since second grade and I just, um, I just figured you'd grow out of it from somebody who worked with kids with special ed. Hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. Who <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>, <laughs> Hi, Sorry. I'm 17. I'm finally getting seen by a psychologist who diagnoses me as ADD and depressed and OCD. My mom's response, I've known you were ADD since second grade. I just figured you'd grow out of it. My mother was a special education teacher in middle school, middle school grades. I don't think that that's how that works. Nope. That's nope. This is it's it's almost like that there have been medications and therapy <laughs> techniques developed specifically because people don't just grow out of things like that. Almost. Yeah, now no. don't now don't now listen, I'm not I'm not necessarily saying that science is a thing, but science is a fucking thing. Go figure. Yeah, I I I actually am starting to come to a conclusion that I I actually don't think the concoction of diagnoses was quite accurate. I have a feeling it was something else that makes more sense than, like, four different diagnoses. But, um, you know, ignoring it for years isn't really gonna do anything. It's right. It's like, attempting to treat it would have at least figured, I don't know, fucking something out. Right. Re <laughs> right. Regardless, like, doing something about it is still better than doing nothing about it. Fun fact. You do indeed not grow out of ADD. It, it, that's not how that works. You just either get better at coping, or you just go until you suck at it, which is what happened. I could no longer pass glasses anymore by yeah. just kind of sliding by. Yeah, I just, you know, it's, and it, and again, I know we've been talking about how, how hard it is to, to cut people, you know, those toxic people out of our life. And we've been focusing so much on, you know, family and, and blood relatives and, how much we, you know, we, how our chosen people, you know, a lot of times can be 
you know, more important to us and, and we, we care about them more um, than the, the blood relatives we were sort of dealt. But, you know, it's one thing to cut out someone like that who is who's related to you and is, 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 you know, you have an unhealthy relationship with. It's another thing altogether when you have chosen a person to be one of your people and it doesn't work and it doesn't like you and whether it, whether it doesn't work immediately or whether over time, like that relationship deteriorates and you notice more and more that that person for whatever reason you know, doesn't give you the same love, respect that they once did. And that's, that's, I think that is the, the biggest heartbreak is when you choose someone and then later you realize that they no longer have that same, you know, whatever, whatever it may be with you. Um, and mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've been through that myself a couple of times um, on both ends where, you know, I've, I've had people who have disconnected from me that I care very much about, and I've had to, to pull myself away from people that I care very much about. And that it, like, I'm Andrea, I'm with you. That is, that is one of my biggest fears is that people will like my people, my chosen people will pull away from me. That's part of the reason why I'm so nervous about, opening up with some of like the like the specifics about some of the stuff that I struggle with like some of my personality treats because you know I I know we talked about this a little while back uh, about how you know the people that that I I do have really good people around me I'm I'm incredibly fortunate and privileged to have some just wonderful people around me um, some that I've known for you know, for over 10 years, like Tom or like, uh, like Andrea, some people that I've known for just weeks now, people like Viv, you know, um, <laughs> but I, you know, well, yeah, Andrea, I'm, yeah, that too. Um, but I, I just, it's so like uh, when I, when I pick a person, you know, no matter what kind of relationship I have with that person in my life, you know, I'm, I give all of myself to that person, you know, I'm, that's just, that's just the way I am. Um, and to have to sever that relationship, whether it's by your choice or theirs, it's, 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 it's heartbreaking. It's, it's, it's terrifying. And you know, no matter how much you love and how much you give, sometimes you have to make that difficult decision. Um, and I know I've, again, having conversation with, with friends, even as recently as the last few days where, you know, people that they're still, they're going through the same kind of thing where, you know, people that they chose to be one of their people and, you know, not getting, not getting the love and, and respect that they deserve from that person, you know, just trying to talk things out with, with them. And, and instead of having, you know, being receptive to it they're they push back or, you know, they get upset or they get, you know, they, they, um, they want to, you know, get, I guess, short or, or irritated with with you and you get like you you know no matter what you do no matter how much you try to, to love them and bring that stuff up with them they don't um they don't give that back to you in return and that's that's difficult like that's heartbreaking and, and again especially for people you know like like me like you know like you elena like we we give ourselves to our people like we are all in on our people and cause we do, but I'm, I don't know. I, I, like I said, it's still that bad disconnect. I, I, I think there is one person in my life that would rock me longer and 
Chris already knows it's not him. It's the it's my best friend because I've known her for 20 years. That is about the only person I think that would actually hit me yep. for a significant amount of time. Yep. Like, mm. other than that, like, I'm still getting used to the fact that I'm Chris isn't going to just get rid of me. Like, this is still news to me sometimes. So, like, I'm just kind of, I've done this so much that I'm just kind of used to it. Like, I just don't have that fear. I, I don't have a fear of abandonment because I kind of just expect it. But, <laughs> no, and, and that's, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's, it's a learned coping mechanism. I have zero fear of abandonment. I just assume it's going to happen. Yeah, I just. It's taken 20 years for me to assume that my best friend probably isn't going to disappear until she dies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's still that probably, like, I still would probably be okay with that much sooner than, than would be normal. Yeah, I just, I, but you, you, you kind of, you, you kind of came around to the point though, like you have a best friend, like you have the, this one person that, you know, even outside of maybe like romantic relationships, you know, romantic partnerships, like you have with Lollipop, you have someone who's been like your ride or die for 20 years, like someone who has who has been that person who has stuck by you no matter what. And I know there's always times when we're going to have disagreements. We butt heads. Tom and I, we butt heads on shit all of the time. It's because he is an ornery potato and I am a mm -hmm. stubborn old bear. Mm -hmm. Ali Beth, you know this. You know how ornery of a fucking potato he is because you live with his ornery ass. Ooh, 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 yep. ooh, ooh, ooh. I know this one. I find my feet to be delicious a lot of times, so we butt heads a lot. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you yeah. Know, when I put my mind to it. Well, listen, and and you know, it's not, it's not, it's not necessarily, and again, it's not necessarily intentional. Sometimes no, you just, sometimes you just don't think before you open your mouth and put those tasty toesies in there. Um. Sometimes he didn't listen to what I said the sentence before and says really stupid things, and didn't realize he was replying to what he was. Too. And then, and then later, and then later, <laughs> Lollipop and I have a conversation about. I said something really dumb, and I made Elena mad at me, and I have to go make it better now. <laughs> and we have those conversations sometimes, and it it happens because we just, again, these are these are unintentional things that happen sometimes. But tasty toes, <laughs> tasty toesies. But again, the important thing is. Whether you learn from that experience, you grow as a person, and you make a conscious effort to not do that anymore, or whether you go in the opposite direction and you just continue doing what you're doing with no regard as to how it affects someone else. Listen, don't make me, don't make me come into that chat. I swear to God. I swear to God. I didn't use all caps. No, it's. I'm not worried about the caps. Oh. No, they're oh. they're they're fine with the caps. And come in there and fucking snuggle all of you. Um, <laughs> oh yay! Is that a threat or a promise? <laughs> yeah. say, just for the record, that snuggle chamber does have like eight beds in it now. So. It's got ten beds in it. It's five doubles. You know, a little Ooh. column A, a little column B. Threat. So promise. much room for activities. So much room for activities. <laughs> um, but uh. but no, it's it's. Again, you know, when you have to have those conversations with with your chosen people, and especially those people that you're so close to, those those ones that have been with you through, you know, some of those really happy times, those really difficult times, those just sometimes when life is is at its, at its shittiest, um, you know, when you have to have those kind of conversations with people like that, like that's, I think, is the hardest of all. But the thing that you always have to remember is no matter how much you care about someone, no matter how much you love someone, you always, always, always have to take care of yourself first. Because if you don't take care of yourself first, you're not, you know, you're doing a disservice to all of the other people that you love and that you care about. Um, and, you know, again. I found a 
good metaphor somewhere, and it was it was someone who had had this conversation with their therapist. Um, their their therapist was like, "Well, why are you giving them them out of your cup?" And they're like, "I know my cup's running low. I sh I I should be monitoring." They're like, "No." Why are you giving to them out of your cup? And they were confused, and they were like, you don't give to them out of your cup. Your cup is for you. When your cup overflows, you can put it into all these other cups. But you have to keep your cup for you, or you don't have a cup. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. Yep. That's absolutely right. And, you know, again, with our chosen people... We have a tendency to sometimes, you know, those are those because those Stop are the people we chose. Well, them. yeah, because those are the people <laughs> that we've chosen. Like, we've made a conscious decision for those for those people to be the ones who are most important to us. And you know, when when they're hurting, when they're suffering, it's only natural that we want to give you know enough of ourselves to them for them to be able to get by. And it's. It's difficult, you know, when you're you have that person that doesn't and does, that no longer, you know, is willing to give back or just wants to take. And as hard as it is, you know, those are the people that sometimes you have to have the hard conversation of get your fucking shit together. This is not the way that I should be treated. Or even more difficult saying I'm sorry. This Come back to me when, when you can treat me with the respect that I deserve. Because all I do is give to you, and I don't get anything back in return, and that's not fair to me. Respect, Bossman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Viv, I'm. I yeah, I've, 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 I've struggled with that for a long time too, and and just getting to the point now to where I. And again, it's just me just trying to continually just like reinforce it constantly, like daily. Like I have to I have to make sure that I have enough before I give to anyone else. It's kind of like spoon theory, you know? Like it's 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 just like spoon theory. You only have so many spoons that you can give to certain tasks or certain people. And when you run out of spoons, you don't have any left for yourself. And for the people that we're in these relationships with, again, no matter what kind of relationship it is, there's going to be times where you're going to have to, you know, give spoons to those people so that they can do what they need to do. And sometimes you're going to need them back. You're going to have to get some from them because we all go through some shit. Um, explaining spoon theory to my mother was hilarious oh really cause she uh, she was trying to take it literally just buy more spoons oh. <laughs> <laughs> just buy more spoons head yourself over to the Ikea pick you up a couple more listen don't don't joke I will go to the Ikea and I will buy way too much of any kind of kitchen anything <laughs> It is a blessing, actually, that there's no Ikea here, because all of my money would go there. Yep. I yep. can't have even... Within a half hour. Yep, Ikea we sure even do. has plants. You can buy plants at Ikea. Yep. Sure can. So, it would be bad. We... All of the bad. And then you could buy furniture to put the plants on. Yes. We have a fake Ikea plant downstairs. So, yeah, yeah. And I have I have IKEA furniture that is my network rack or my my equipment rack for all of this stuff. Um, like eighty percent of our furniture is IKEA furniture. Like eighty percent of our furniture is Alex drawers. Like let's be real here. Okay. Like, yeah. Just Alex drawers. <laughs> yeah, because two for my desk, two for your desk, one for my computer, two for Robert's desk, one for my work desk, one for my space desk. Two for my work desk. So, so really, many, so is. so really, you don't shop at IKEA so much as you just keep buying the one thing over and over again. Okay, well, that I don't and know. Helmer drawers. I don't oh, know if you have yeah. me. Oh yeah. But who I am as a person is the person who keeps buying the same thing over and over again. Like literally, I have considered going out and getting my purse in like three more copies so that I just never have to change it for the next like two decades. Listen, I have I have a pair of flip flops. 
that I wear and it, like they're the shoes they're my daily shoes whenever I have to actually go somewhere okay and I'm on my second pair of these shoes and I've been tempted to buy a couple more pairs because they're so comfortable they actually fit my feet they actually support my feet they have arch supports in them as flip-flops for God's sake and I would do it because by the time you want to go get them again, they'll be discontinued or something, and you'll be the saddest bear that ever did bear because this has happened to me. Well, not only that, but like I wear a size fucking fourteen, so yeah, it's it's already hard enough to find shoes. And you know what, Andrea brings up a good point. Bye. We we are we are out of time tonight. <sighs> It was a good chat tonight. It was. I think last week last week was almost exclusively food. Well, we did talk about going to concerts, mm. but mostly food. Um, but yeah, I think this was this was one that we really needed to have. And I know, I know there are people that are struggling with stuff, and hopefully, you know, they'll they'll get to watch this later and um, get what they need out of it. Um, so let's see. Friday's Fortnite. Um, Elaine, are you playing? Sure. No. We'll figure it out by then. Well, don't don't sound so excited about it's, it. It's not. No, it's, it's not, not a, difficult. That's, not a, that's a. I'm indecisive, so I'm going with yes. Like I. That's not a. Oh my god, I feel forced. That's a. Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay. I mean, but, I have been able to figure out how to somewhat play it. If I can figure out how to somewhat play it, you can figure it out. Oh. Um, I, it, it, listen, I, I figured it out. Anybody can figure it out, okay? It's I don't know how to do mm. shit. Don't give me that shit, Thunder. I, I, am I wrong? No, I am not yes. wrong. You are very wrong. No, I am not wrong. Your entire broadcasting setup and coding career and all that says you're very wrong. That's just, listen, that's just repetition. That's all it is. I've just been doing it long enough to where I know how to do it now. And Fortnite's the same thing. It's repetition. That's what the, exactly. So you just you just show up and you just do it. So there you go. So you'll mm -hmm. be fine. See, you 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 poked just, a hole in your own theory there. I am game for this. I want to figure out the building, so I will probably spend tomorrow night messing around with it. Yeah. Wait, is today today's Wednesday, right? Today's Wednesday. Yep. yep. Okay. So you got Good. a couple of days. <laughs> All right. So then you'll be on. Um, uh, Ali Pup, do you want to do do you want to do another simulcast on on Friday? Is that like do you want to play with us? Because that was that was a fun fun time. I enjoyed that. Okay, all right. So for Friday, we will have me. We will have Tom. We will have Elena. We will have Ali Pup. We'll be broadcasting on both channels. So um, between rounds, you can play Stream Raiders with Ali Pup uh, while I'm thinking about it. Please, please, please. Ready to Tokyo Drift. Let's see. Thank you for those bits, NS. I love you, buddy. Also, go follow Ali Pup so that you can watch both of us on Friday while we do all of this ridiculous, like, fork knifing. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So, Friday we'll do Fortnite. Sunday we will be back in dungeons um, trying to get better weapons and whatnots um oh yeah viv you might want to get on that you might you might want to do that i don't i know you two you two just met and everything you know but it's fine it's, it's a joke they've they're you know they're very close um let's see uh no al alibeth that we we know how good you've been doing we 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 have a man on the inside okay <laughs> It's somebody okay, sorry. watching you. Sorry, I'm about to like be like Elaine and be like, oh, I didn't make that much progress. Yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be the new thing. I'm just gonna be like, oh, I'm just pulling an Elena over here. Didn't My do God. that great. <laughs> oh. But it is fun. It is fun. Uh, I was gonna go see who we can. Let's see who. There's a Mo and a fire and a Jean. Yeah. Last time I checked, Mo was working on on, a, on her own storage design, right? She is, yeah. but Mo Mo is Mo is about to. She's getting ready to. Yeah, she's she's 
getting out. She um, wraps up around the same time. She does. She's actually, she usually gets done between like 9.30 and now. So um, mm -hmm. let's go see. No, NS, you don't want to follow. You don't want to follow me. That's that's a really bad, bad uh, thing. Um, let's go see Fire. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let's see. Run. Yeah, let's go see Fire. I, I love old All right. Fire. Yay! Good guy. Good guy, Fire. There's the raid message. Um, you know the drill. Um, and that's that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. Um, thank y'all. I love y'all. Uh, this, this has been, once again, just an amazing night, an amazing discussion. Um, I'm going to... Yeah. Yeah, we're. I'm gonna try to come up with a topic for next week as well, because um, we're. I think this worked out really well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is this is gonna. This is this has been fantastic, and I. This is. I think this is the show that I look forward to most every week. Um, so thank you all so much. I love you very much. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get ready and let's go. Let's go see old friend Firepower and. Yeah. All right. I will see y'all. Uh, I will see y'all on Friday for Fortnite. See you then. Bye. Bye.